So as you can see, we've got a blank live set here with two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. And our browser is open so we can see where our sounds are going to come from. You'll notice that I have a top-down view of Ableton Push, the new controller that Ableton made in conjunction with Akai. It streamlines production and performance by introducing some great new ways to write music. And the new form factor gives you a different look at how to be creative. Today we're going to focus on drums because Push has some fast ways to make your drum patterns, even if you're a beginner at programming drums. Push service is really easy to use. On the left hand side we have a bunch of our global controls, including tap tempo, our metronome, our ribbon controller, and our transport controls. The right hand side sets us up to jump up and down in the levels of our session to control racks and devices as well as note and session views and our navigation controls at the bottom. Grid in the middle is velocity and pressure sensitive and the top knobs give us feedback for whatever we're controlling at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to the browse button on the right. I hit it and it brings up all the options for me to choose from. I'm going to load up a drum rack and my old favorite, the 909 kit. You can use the knobs to scroll or you can use the orange buttons. As soon as you find something you're happy with, hit the green button and it will load. You'll also notice that on the screen, it will update to reflect this. Not only does it open the browser, showing you what you've loaded, but it also shows you the info on the track and the devices below. Now you can see that I have this yellow X because we're still in the middle of loading our sounds for the drum rack. This is called hot swap. This mode is waiting for me to decide if I'm happy with my sounds or if I want to replace them with something else. I'm happy with these sounds. So I hit the browse button one more time and we're out of hot swap mode and can continue. We know this because the yellow bar is gone. So if you look at how push is, is lit up, it seems strange because the top half is dark while the bottom half is lit up. This will change as we use it, you'll see in just a second. Bottom left is going to represent our individual sounds. And the bottom right is going to represent what steps we're playing. Steps? What does he mean by steps? Well, what I mean is step sequencing, the technique we're going to use, goes all the way back to original drum machines and synthesizers. Rather than using a key controller or a drum pad to input notes, we'll put each individual note on the grid one at a time. So the way we do this, we start the sequencer. Just by hitting that top left button, you'll notice that time is passing, just like a metronome. This is a way that Push and Ableton can allow you to input notes one at a time. So now I'm going to start to turn these on. So now what I'm going to do is turn two of these on so that my sequence will be longer, taking up all the rows of the timing. And you can turn on all of these if you want longer time to play back. I'm going into my clip. All I have to do is hit the clip button. This takes me to my MIDI note editor so I can see specifically what I'm putting on the grid. I'm going to go to my kick and now that it's selected, I can turn on all the places where I want it to play. All I have to do is light up the downbeat, the first beat of each measure, to get my 4-4 pattern. As a green light crosses them, each sound will play. In step sequencing, it's easy to sort of cheat and randomly place drum hits because you're working with a grid that is all musically relevant. As I play them back, a completely random pattern can still sound good. The problem we're hearing, though, is that these drums sound a little bit too much on the grid. It sounds robotic and structured. What I need to do is change this to make it sound more human and loose while retaining the main rhythmic idea. In order to do that, I can quantize. But more specifically, I can use the swing feature in the quantization choices. 
So over here on the left, we have a quantize button. And if you hold it, it brings up a contextual menu. Quantize amount, quantize. And do you want me to snap to every beat or ignore some of them, which is that percentage? Quantization is just the ability to take our musical performance and snap it to a grid. I'm going to use swing amount over here. And the swing amount is actually going to push me off the grid, but by a consistent amount that I set. It'll still sound loose and more human, but this way I can now have much more of a tight performance with some feel to it. And if I want to, I can also duplicate this elsewhere. Right now, you'll notice that if I look at the screen, it doesn't look like much has moved. But if I change my grid value and zoom in, you can see where the drum hits are slightly off the grid. I zoomed in by holding Shift and Plus to see my pattern better. Now we can see that some of my hits are a little early and some are late. Perfect. This creates a cool feel that a, and a less mechanical, kind of rigid performance. So I ended up using 20% to swing the drums off the grid a noticeable amount, but still not feeling totally behind the beat. This is a good thing because it creates a feel not based on any real strict criteria. I'll know it's right when I hear it. And because the quantize value stays on push after you use it, when I go back to it for a different drum sound, I can use the same swing amount if I want. I can also swing each drum value slightly differently, giving me lots of creative possibilities. The notes being moved in the MIDI note editor also keep a record of what we did, so when we reboot the push, we don't have to try to remember what we did. Not bad. Now I'm going to go through and add on top of what I have. At any point when I'm playing back, I can just hit the record button and jam right on top. Now I made a mistake and only played back part of my sequence, but by holding both of my steps at the same time, it'll play the whole sequence back. I can quantize and fix it. So now I have tight timing, but with a little bit of a layback feel to it. Now I'll quickly go through and put in my claps. I know I want my claps on every second downbeat, so that's easy. Just turn them on. And you can see how quickly and easily not only can I have a fun time playing here, but I have both the structure that's built into step sequencing and the top half for what I want to do to build rhythms in that way. And also the ability to go through and jam right on top and all the other functions to be able to clean it up. Now another great function that we have here is called repeat. If I hit repeat, anything that I play will repeat at whatever value I set here on the right. In this particular case, I'm going to use 16th notes.
So now what I'm going to do is lay this over the top of my other drums. And you'll notice how the pads are pressure sensitive, so you can hear the roll getting louder or softer, depending on how hard I press while I'm playing. Now when I play it, I get a pretty nice roll really easily. So you can see how quickly and powerfully I can use these functions, the step sequencing, live performance, quantization, swing, and repeat to take these usually complicated functions and do them easily right from the control surface. Push makes my workflow very fast and very easy. Now the last thing I wanted to show you is the record quantization function, also under your quantize options. If I hold down quantize, you can see that over on the right, it says 1 16th record quantize and it's off. If you're like me, most of the time when I play drums, I'm close, but not quite on time. This will fix my timing and also allow me to fix things on the fly in a live situation. Despite that first time that you played something being off a little, the next time it plays back, the timing will be fixed. And most audiences can't really notice the first time around anyway. That's it for now with push and drum programming. I'm Brian Markman, Director of Education from SAE Institute in Los Angeles. Hope you learned something. See you next time.